Lift your hands. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Lift your hands. I want you to begin at this moment. I literally see us at the pool of Bethesda. I literally see the angel troubling the water. I literally see manifested miracles and promises. But you have to go get it. Now, I'm not talking about with noise. I'm talking about with posture. I want you to posture your heart at this moment to receive what God has for us in this place. Come on, can you do it internally? Internally. Wherever you are, Miami, Chicago, London, Africa, wherever you are, posture yourself in this place right now. Stay right here with us. Stay right here with us. Feel us. Feel us. And God, we will be so careful. We lift our hearts with praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place everybody say Wednesday June 28th Wednesday June 28th at noon I am pleased to invite you to the grand opening and ribbon cutting of the Dream Center Houston Cultural Complex come on give God some glory in this place today It's been a long time coming. The devil thought he was going to stop it. But it did not work. Somebody said it didn't work. Our tagline for the Dream Center is, this is the destination for dreamers. And let me give you our mission statement. I believe that dreams are vessels of hope and that every treasured memory, milestone, and cultural event is worth celebrating. Our mission is to honor, support, and serve all dreamers in pursuing their goals with courage, determination, and creativity. Everyone has the potential to turn their dreams into reality, and we are committed to nurturing the pathways of innovation and self-expression with versatile programming and high-quality resources in a modern environment. For those daring to manifest their passions, achieve their goals, and take bold action, we offer a welcoming, multi-purpose, state-of-the-art complex with adaptable functionality where boundary vaulting dreams can be catalyzed to thrive in an inclusive environment. At the Dream Center, we are founded up on a legacy of success to foster a culture of excellence where the Intrepid are fear to soar to the heights of their imagination. And I also want to let you know that the Ignite Community School will be opening in August in the Dream Center with over 250 K-5 through 5th graders right here on the Lighthouse North Campus. Can you praise God for it all? Hallelujah. So it's Father's Day. And if you've ever struggled to understand a man, I'm about to tell you why. I've had to keep my emotions encapsulated today because I'm on assignment. 
there is no more misunderstood species on the earth like a man. And women are empowered all around the world. All the time, almost every day. And yet men are just expected to just figure it out. Today, I ask you to posture your heart so that I can explain your father to you. So that I can explain your husband to you. So that I can explain your son to you. And the reason why you don't know is because we need the most help and we do the less speaking. We will hurt and not tell you we're dying. At this very moment, as I preach this sermon, my brother is in the hospital. Uh, they found a double aneurysm on his brain. And they didn't find it while he was on vacation. They found it while he was in the boxing ring training because all men do is fight. And it is often in the fight you see our weakness. And when we explode, we die. Now, thank God they caught it. He took his first steps yesterday, walked outside. <laughs> Was it Wednesday? Or Wednesday, my wife and I were at the airport, standing at gate D1. There are 161 gates in IAH airport. We were standing at gate D1, flight set to leave at 619. We are in line, about to walk on the plane, and my sister-in-law calls me hysterical. She's crying. She tells me what happened, and I immediately start sweating. My wife is looking at me. She's trying to figure out what's going on. I go in the bathroom. My wife is sweat off my face. She takes the phone, and we switch our flight to go to San Diego on Wednesday. The travel agent said there's only one flight going out to San Diego today. It leaves at seven o'clock, but you probably won't make it. It's at gate D1. So we are literally at the gate that's taken us where we thought we were going and taking us where we needed to be. Touch somebody and say, you're at the right gate. You're at the right church. You're in the right service. Because God's about to do a turnaround and you're not going to have to get far. It's going to start from where you're standing. Touch somebody. My, my miracle is starting from where I'm standing, right here. I don't have to switch seats. I don't have to go to another church. I don't have to wait till next week. It's about to turn around now, and I'm standing on holy ground. And the miracle is I could have been telling you about his arrangements. I'm telling you about his testimony. Let this be a lesson that you can lead while you bleed and you can do your job when your heart is broken. You got something to do. Slap your neighbor and say, you got something to do. Don't let the devil have you in the bed five and six weeks and five and six months. You got territory to seize. You got... You got miracles to attain. You got things to do. Touch your neighbor and say, I got stuff to do. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him 
and help me for him, not him for her, her for him. See, we can stop right there. I know y'all all, I know y'all all think we for y'all, but y'all for us. See, this gonna mess up, this ain't gonna mess up your theology, it's gonna mess up with your culturalology. This gonna mess up your TikTok and your Instagram. Because we ain't for y'all. Y'all were made. Should I unbutton my jacket? Now, Mother's Day, don't look for nothing for me today. Mother's Day ain't here. <laughs> Fellas, I got your back. Let me hear you. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Not they. He. Mm. And whatever Adam called it, that's what it was. Mm. Fellas, you're going to have to have my back because they already got attitude. They, they already, I'm, and I'm reading the Bible. That'll tell you how difficult it's going to be. I'm not reading, the, I'm not giving them a thesis statement, a paper that I wrote, a doctor. I'm reading the Bible and they already like, where this going? And Adam gave names to the cattle and the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But Adam was not, he was there, but was not found any help for him. Verse 21, then the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon him and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he woe man and brought her unto him. And Adam said, she fine? That's what bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She's a brick. Mighty God. And after all of that, after being alone all of that time, the moment she got there, everything changed. Now he has to leave his mother and father while she keeps hers and cleave unto his wife. I'm going to tell you right now, women are going to say this all day to me. Watch it, Reverend. I'm not watching it. You watch me. It's going down. It's going down. I've been waiting on Father's Day since Christmas. I marked this on my calendar. Y'all get all year, but we're going to get today. And they became, no, that's not what it says. Because when we read it, we always say, and, and the two shit, and they were both naked, but, but, but I want you to hear what the Bible says. The Bible says, therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Just because you found a man or a man found you doesn't mean you become one flesh. You got to work, and if you keep working, one day you shall be. So it doesn't mean you got the wrong partner because y'all can't get along right now. You're still in the shall be phase.
and they were both naked, the man and his wife. And as of this moment, they were not ashamed. I want to talk on this subject for the next few moments. The Adam's apple. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Adam's apple. Um, for those who will watch this online, and for those of y'all who um, have a tendency to have my back online when people lie, point them to the first five seconds of the message. This don't go for everybody. Because all the comments were like, well, in my case, you don't know my case. Generally speaking. Got that part? Watch what happens tomorrow. I don't think it is new news to anyone listening to me online or in this building that Adam was the first human created. I do recognize that there are other theories, but they are not supported by the canon of Scripture. There was only one name that Moses documents in the book of Genesis, which is not the first book written, just the first in chronological order in the scripture. The book of Isaiah was written before Genesis. Be that as it may, by virtue of the fact that Adam was the first man created, he also coincidentally becomes the first father in operation. God formed him out of the dust, breathes into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God forms him out of the dust, breathes into him the breath of life, Adam takes his first breath, opens his eyes, and everything already is. The water's already wet. The sun is already hot. And he sees animals that already have companionship. And here he is all alone. Now, I don't know this to be true, but I do know the Bible says that to, to God, a day is a thousand years. Second Peter, and a thousand years is but a day. There are some theories then that would suggest that these are not seven consecutive days, these are seven consecutive thousands of years. Quite plausible, not impossible, that Adam was in the garden a thousand years before he had company. Are you with me so far? And all of a sudden, after doing his own thing, his own way, whether it is for 24 hours or a thousand years, now everything has to change because of the introduction of something God said he needed. You have to understand that the first desire for woman didn't come from Adam, it came from the design of God. And he brings her out of him. She is man, but she is woe man, which means womb man. That means she's a man with a womb. She's made of the same thing he's made of. She has the same drive, tenacity, and will that he has. And the intentions of God was for them to walk in blissful happiness and the Garden of Eden was paradise until the serpent snuck into the garden and beguiled Eve and got her to take of the fruit which was the forbidden fruit that God had given them instruction that everything in the garden was theirs except for the tree in the middle of the garden. 
Anybody in here knows the fruit you want the most is the one you ain't supposed to have. Talk to your boy in here today. Adam has never had parents. He's the only man never born. He was created. He never saw a father. He had no uncles. He didn't get a chance to have an example, no role model. He was born and he began. He didn't know what a father was supposed to be. He didn't know what a husband was supposed to be. He had no family. He had no friends. He just arrived to a functioning planet. Are y'all still with me? And when God needed somebody to take care of what he created, he got Adam introducing the malady of man. We're only needed when somebody needs something taken care of. As long as everything was well, Adam wasn't needed. But when he recognizes, and this is after the fall, that the earth needs to be tended and the ground needs to be tilled, he goes and says, all right, now I need Adam because the grass is overgrown. I need Adam because the refrigerator is broken. I need, Al I need Adam because the carburetor needs fixed. I need Adam because the, the car needs gas. I need Adam because the windows are, are, are broken. I need Adam because they won't listen to me. So if I get daddy to be the disciplinarian, I'll go get your daddy. I'll tell your daddy if you won't listen to me. Now, now there's a complex in men that we're only needed when somebody has a need. Not needed because you need us. Need it because you need us to handle a need. Oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. Uh, see, I need me because I, I've got I've to change the tire. Now, now, you can do anything a man can do until it comes time to do things that men do. You can open your own door until you want a man to open your door. I got it. I can carry it until you want somebody else to carry it. And then when we don't do what you tell us you can do, then we are considered inconsiderate for not doing what you told us you can do on your own. Now, fellas, they ain't never this quiet. I normally can't even get past this far in a sermon without 7,000 women. Ah! I'm telling you, they ain't going to have nothing to say today. And look at the woman next to you and say, I don't care how you look, and he don't either. You ain't going to get me today. I came to fight every one of you. He never saw a marriage. He never saw a marriage. You might not shout today. He never saw a marriage. He never saw a father give grace. And so now he's asked to do what he's never saw, which is exactly what is happening to black men and brown men in our country today because 67% of minorities are born into single family homes. Asked to be what we've never saw. Asked to be a father. Our fathers were fathers to somebody else, but not to us. Because typically, a father in this generation and dispensation only gets to be a father in the home he lives in. But he doesn't get to be a full functioning father in a home he does not live in because when you have custodial parental rights, you get to make choices without input. But only call us when the outcome isn't the same as you anticipated. Come get your son. Oh, I thought he was yours. Come get your daughter. Oh, no, uh, you told them in court that you had it. And now we have women who are having babies without the intent of having a man. Introducing fertilization, introducing 
all of the technology that allows for a woman to have a child without the influence of a father. And let me tell you something, women, you might be a good mother, but you ain't never gonna be a good daddy. Can I just be quite frank, and I hope you take this with a grain of salt, you don't have what it takes to be a father. You have to have certain things inside of you in order to be a father. And guess what? We can't be mothers either. So it is not about sexism. It is about knowing what you can be. Be 100% mama and leave daddy and up to mentors and Jesus. See, the thing about a father is everything don't make us happy. Your child can bring home, uh, um, he can go to, in the basketball game and, and play 75 minutes and get two points. And you're going to be like, that's my baby. When he get in our house, we're going to be like, boy, if you're going to be out there that long and don't do nothing, sit your butt down. This ain't what, this ain't what God birthed you to do. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Daddy love and mama love ain't the same. That's why the Bible says that we got to have both of them in order to raise fully functioning children. You got to have somebody who will hug you at night and you got to have somebody who will get in your face and tell you that being trifling is not something you're going to do with this last name. And I know some mothers in here do both of them, but ain't nothing like a father. Let, let me help. Let me, let me slow down. And what I've learned about fathering is that it is a good exercise when you witness it, but it is hard for you to let it be. It is hard. It is hard to watch a father really be a father. We don't have the same emotions you have. We don't have the same outcomes and realization you have. And they need both of them. They need, listen, if, if God is a father, then let me tell you how he loves. Those whom he loves. He chastises. Y'all got to hear me in here today. You got to understand the difference between punishment and love. Some love says, I'm not letting you get away with it. Some love says, you are better than that. Some love says, let me call you on the carpet. And if it means our relationship is a little rocky for a few weeks, then it's okay if I'm securing your future. So stop calling your husband mean and just call him a man. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Stop calling him callous and narcissistic every time he stands up for something. You've got the wrong definition on him. Let me tell you what he is in most cases. A M-A-N, a man. And when you have been born into a home where there wasn't one, you don't recognize one when you see one. And so when you don't recognize a man when you haven't seen one, then the only definition of man you can come up with is the one that was given to you by somebody who came before you. Imagine you were the daughter or the son of a bitter woman and she defined manhood to you. Imagine your mother had been hurt by five men before you were born. What kind of man do you think she's going to tell you that all men are? Most people who define men define it from their pain, not their intellect. And so we are mean and weak and calloused and inconsiderate. But it's a little more complicated than that. Y'all got time? Because when Hammond was up here, y'all was ready to go all day, so you're going to wait. If you, if you look in the Bible, it is interesting um, if you connect the reality of Adam just opposed to the theology of Adam. The Hebrew word transliterated Adam is found 560 times in the Old Testament alone, and the overwhelming majority of cases the name Adam means man. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. That in, in 560 times you see the word Adam, it is God actually saying the word man. So how many times have we read the scripture thinking about God talking about the man in the garden? And he was talking about, somebody say man. 
all right? And so in Genesis 1, I'm, I'm about to help you, brothers. I'm about to help you. I hope I am anyway. In Genesis 1, we see that God created the world and everything in it. And on the first day, he created what? Light and darkness. On the second day, he created the firmament or what we call the atmosphere. On the third day, he created the land and the plants. On the fourth day, the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the fifth day, he created the fish and the birds. And on the sixth day, he created man with the animals. And on the seventh day, he rested. Now, without getting too far into the discussion, you have already been introduced to the male malady. First came the light and the darkness. Then came the atmosphere. Then came the, the plants and the trees. Then came the galaxy. Then came the fish and the birds. And finally, after everything else has been considered, here comes man. And you have been introduced to the male malady because most men in this room and most online will tell you that all of their life, they have been the last thing to be considered. Everything comes before man. We even got statements like, ladies first, happy wife. Come on, don't get quiet. But remember when I read the text, the text didn't say we were made for y'all. The Bible says she was made for him. And by the way, if you go and look in the Old Testament, Whenever a man and woman was married in the Old Testament, a woman stood at the altar and the man walked down the aisle. But now here comes. Oh, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, the church is the bride. And Jesus is the groom. And the last I saw, the church is here waiting on the groom to come. Oh. So if you want us to love you like God loved the church, why are we always doing the waiting? Ooh, I'm messing up. See, and I'm not messing up your theology. I'm just messing up your opinion. Because the things most of you all are thinking have nothing to do with Scripture. Oh, God. I, I can't stand how quiet y'all are. This, this is very, you ought, to, you ought to be really paying attention to yourself how you act when you get to truth. Men are always considered last. <laughs> we got to wait. Any good man will tell you, 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 if you got a couple of dollars, you got to make sure everybody in the house has it. You got to go without. And even parents teach their sons, them, them, your sisters, let them go first. Let them get the bathroom first. Let them be first. Let them be first. And so in every step of his life, he's always last. Women get in a club for free. Y'all get free drinks from four to six. Tell me one club that says, men special. The first 50 men get in free. I... Now we got to buy bottles at $1,500 a pop so all of the women can drink for free. Come on now, come on. If you can't say man, say ouch. <laughs> Fellas, I'm telling you, you're going to you're gonna have to say something because if y'all don't start saying amen, I'm going to switch on y'all right now. I'm going to turn a corner because when I help them out, they say something. Now you better say something. I'll fight y'all too. But let me tell you why. Let me tell you why the men are sitting here silent. Because they're afraid if they say too much, there are consequences. 
Oh, 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 so you gonna, you gonna let Reb get you in trouble? Don't let Reb come up and mess up our house. No, Reb telling the word of God. You messed up the house. I want you to remember the name of my sermon, the Adam's apple. And I'm not talking about the one in the garden. I'm talking about this one. You're going to get it in a minute. You're going to get it in a minute. I came cocked and loaded and ready to fight the devil in here today. And the reason why I'm not talking about the one in the garden, we don't even know what fruit they ate in the garden. We don't know if it was an apple. But I'm talking about this Adam's apple. Ladies first. Ladies night. What a dude's night. Have y'all ever been to a jewelry store? Say the jewelry store is the size of the stage. All of this is the women's rings. And here go the men's ring section. Right over here in the corner. That's why all of us got the same ring on. We ain't got no four choices. Ain't but three men's rings in the whole world. Women got oval, square, emerald, cushion, uh, big, small, clarity, cut, princess cut. Diana cut, Sarah cut, all we got is a band. Just a, a gold or a black or a wooden band. See, we live in a world of double standards. Now, now I've been watching online, men have been getting wigs lately. And y'all been laughing and talking about us, but uh, you haven't wore your hair natural since Madam C.J. Walker. Why in the world? Why y'all making fun of us? If we want to change how we look, shouldn't we be able to do it like you? Your hair is not that straight, and it ain't that long. Now, if we get rid of all of the help in here today, it's going to be a whole lot of Nigerian sisters in the room today. Because your real texture underneath that silk texture, all we got to do is look at your neck. Now we can tell. Y'all better stop playing with us. That ain't yours. I ain't saying nothing wrong with your wig, but stop making fun of the brothers if they want one. You can see sisters online, oh, girl, look at him. That wig is out of control. Uh, baby, let me tell you something. Some of y'all wigs, out of pocket. Fellas, holla at your boy, because they ain't, they, ain't, they, ain't, they ain't came to no church. Hmm. I was in the golf store yesterday getting me some, getting me a golf bag. And the women always make fun of men about how we always wait to the last minute when it's Mother's Day. Let me tell you how many women was in the golf store yesterday getting golf Getting, getting gift cards last minute. Just, just, I mean, a million of them in there. Well, asking a man, what men like? All right, get, now, this was yesterday. <laughs> Y'all want picnics in the park, a drone to bring a battle crystal down from the air. You want a plastic bubble with an air conditioner in the inside because you had nine months of labor. And I understand that mothers ought to be respected and applauded, but so should fathers. We 
people just always falling behind. Go do the statistics right now. Look at boys and girls in academia. The boys are falling behind academically, behind women. If you go to graduate schools right now, women are outnumbering men in graduate schools two to one. And in the 1980s, it was even. So right now, you have two women being educated for every one man. Do you hear me? You, and if you're a woman, you can be a double minority if you are black or brown. Are you listening to me? And let me tell you something. And when I looked at my brother in the hospital bed, it made me realize that our men are dropping out of the workforce, overdosing on drugs, contemplating suicide, drinking themselves to death, and dying seven years earlier. I want you to look at the mall the next time you go and you see an older couple and the woman is about 70 years old and the man is about 72. The woman gonna be 72, 75, still in heels walking. Just getting it. And here go Willie Earl behind her. They the same age. Pay attention. Why we, why, what is it about, why are we dying seven years earlier? Did God give women special hearts than he gave men? Do y'all have veins we don't have? Do y'all have kidneys we don't have? Oh, maybe we have pressure that you don't have. Maybe we have responsibilities that you don't have. And maybe the weight on us has drug us so far down that a 50-year-old man can be in the hospital with a double aneurysm. And where are the hashtags that protect us? Us too. We have no dates that protect us, only dates that memorialize us. Not only are we being killed in our homes, we are being killed in our streets. Not always by gang members. Sometimes by those who promise to protect and serve. On the first day, he created day and night. On the second day, he created the atmosphere. Oh, there is a Paris climate agreement with 160 plus nations protecting the air. He created the fish and the fowl. There's a game and wildlife coalition that protects it. He created the sun, moons, and stars, and NASA has spent trillions of dollars appreciating and exploring it. But where's the commission for man? Everything he created has an agency that protects it except for us. Look at commercials that, that publicize things for women. It's always women in the park just happy, just... Oh, if you take this medicine, you're going to be good. Da, da, da. When it's a man's medicine, he like... You seen that one Voltairean with, with the father and the son, he gets up, he can't get up from the desk, he can't walk, and then he takes his dad up to the mountain and he wipes the stuff on his knee and all of a sudden he's better because even the way we're depicted on television is always broken down, always dying, always in need of more. I'm gonna preach today whether you like it or not. And some in our society will blame it on video games, and some will blame it, blame it on fatherlessness, and some will blame it, blame it on negative uh, relationships. And some, but I'm afraid that the problem is a lot more complicated than that. And so are the solutions. Here it is. Are you ready? You want to know why we're struggling, men? Satan hates Adam. I'm going to prove it to you. Satan 
hates Adam. Verse 5 says, there was no man to work the ground. Verse 7 says, so God formed him from the dust. Verse 18 says, the man was alone and God made him a helper. Well, why does he need help? Everybody just say this for me. Help a brother out. Let, let me tell you why he needs help. Because the first two jobs that God gave him are never ending. The first thing God told him to do was till the ground. Can you imagine Adam is over here tilling the ground and as soon as he gets the east side of the garden together, he goes to the west but before he finishes with the west, the east is already growing again and then he goes south to get south done and then he goes to get north but once he gets north done, then south is overgrown but west still needs help so he's over here now trying to fix west again and in the same time that he's trying to keep the garden cut, just imagine having to cut a yard the size of Houston by the time you get one side done and go to the other side, it will have grown again. So now he's in a full-time job, don't know when he's going to get a break, doesn't get an opportunity to stop because he's got to make it pretty for everybody. And in the same time, he's got to name all of the animals. And scientists are still discovering animals today. So that means that just when he figures and thinks he has named all of the animals, here comes another species that needs a name. So now he's cutting and naming, cutting and naming, cutting and naming, and then Eve comes and says, I need me time. I thought you were here to help. Not tell me to do more. I thought you were here to Help, can you name some of these animals? Can you cut some of this grass? Because let me tell you something, you will either babysit a broke man or miss a rich one. No man who is bringing home the bacon and can buy you the house you want and can buy you the car you want and can clothe you the way you want to be clothed has enough time to eat lunch with you every day. So either you're going to have a man who's at home with you all day so you can know where he's at at all times and he can't contribute. Or you're going to have one who knows how to slay giants. But you ain't going to find both of them in one. Any man who got as much time as you want them to have, ain't gonna have as much resources as you need them to have. So you just pick. Do you want a boo or do you want a man? And when that man comes home from cutting that grass and naming those animals, you be at the door talking about Adam. Wherefore art thou, Adam? Remove your fig leaf. No, because we need some help. Help a brother out. Slap your nose and help a brother out. He needs some help. He needs some help. See, the thing about a man, y'all better hear me, a man's primary job is to protect and provide. And let me tell you something. If a woman takes care of the house, you can be too tired to cook. He can never be too tired to protect. Oh, you better hear me. See, the man's job is never ending. He can't ever be too, too tired to provide. He can't ever be too tired to protect, but you can have a headache. By the way, the Bible says your body don't belong to you, it belongs to him, so take an Advil. If you know you're prone to get headaches, wake up and take one, so it'll start working before you get one. You know you got headache problems. <laughs> oh, I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. But you don't recognize that society has commercialized man and womanhood. And because women buy, that's what story is sold. Oh my God. 
You don't have any idea how a good man in the house wakes up every time he hears a sound. This is all men to do right now. When a man is with you, let me tell you something, he has, he has looked at the topography of everything. Okay, if something happens, I'm going to pick this up and knock him out. This is the exit. This is where I'm going to go. I'm going to tell her to go here. Yeah, but he's, he's already trying to figure out how to protect you at all times. Every man in this room right now that is with a woman has already calculated what it would take to protect her without saying a word to you. I know it, Sarge. I just want to think, oh, if I don't open the door for her, how long is she going to be mad at me? If I, if, I, if I don't speak to her when I walk in the house, even though she don't speak to me, how long is she going to be mad at If I don't kiss her, but if she don't kiss me, it's, I forgot. But if I don't kiss her, it's who, you, who else she got? It's, it's... Ain't no need of y'all getting quiet. I'm telling the God's honest truth. He's cutting the grass and he's naming animals. Cutting the grass, naming animals. Cutting the grass, pruning the... And Lord knows, don't let him make a mistake. Don't let him make a mistake, because if he make a mistake, it ain't never gonna be forgotten. And here's the thing, everything that God created in some way has disserved you, and yet you still enjoy it. The sun can give you cancer, but you don't stay inside. The atmosphere can give you allergies, but you just take a pill and you go. The fish can give you food poisoning, but you eat it anyway. But let man make a mistake. Man makes a mistake. He might not ever be forgiven. And women say, oh, we do forgive. We stayed. Just because you stayed don't mean you forgave. <laughs> Some women stay so they can manipulate you into being the kind of weak man they need you to be so they will forgive you so they can control you. They will pretend to forgive you so they can control you. You made a mistake. They think, ah, got him. Now I'm going to make him spend the next 10 years making up for an insecurity I had before I got him. Look at every woman and say, unfold your arms. I don't care. I don't care. See, because let, let ladies, let me tell you something. And this sermon, this sermon gonna, I know they're going to go crazy online. I'm not worried about it. But see, you can't use your body language to get me to change my conversation. You can slouch down in that seat. You can keep rolling your eyes at me. I'm still going to preach. Because why am I talking about the Adam's apple? Brothers, let me give you the end before the beginning. If the devil can get you to stop talking. So now, now you have men. Their answer to the frustration is to get a man cave. And to play video games for nine hours a day. And be in silence. And if there is one thing that frustrates a woman with a man, is when he won't talk. But my question for you is when was the last time what we said considered to be valuable? We are only quiet because you told us we talk too much. Which one do you want? Do you want us to talk to you or do you want us to shut up and let you be you? Which one do you want? Because you are confusing us. Do you want us to shut up and talk or be quiet and listen? Or does it depend on which version of man you want that day? Y'all hear them church mice? <laughs> we have to detoxify what it means to be a man. And being a man doesn't mean we can do everything. Let me tell you something. That man cries. People say, I ain't never seen my daddy cry before. It's because he wouldn't let you see it. But let me tell you. 
your daddy cries. He goes in the bathroom and locks the door and cries in the shower. Make sure that his eyes are not red when he comes out because he knows all of his life tears have been met with condescending comments like weak. Oh, he cries. And let me tell you about a man. He doesn't cry like you. He don't cry with tears. He cries with another woman. He cries by going and buying a sports car and washing it all day long. He cries by buying jewelry and watches. He cries by buying rims. Oh, he will get attention from somebody if you won't give it to him. He cries. He cries. Touch your neighbor and say, men cry. And he struggles to do the one thing that he needs to do the most. Listen to me. He struggles to ask for help. He struggles to ask for help. And when he does ask for help, And he does get the help. He will realize that his life could be better, but Satan has gotten the Adam's apple. The Adam's apple is cartilage that God strategically placed in the body that covers the larynx or what scientists call the voice box. So every attack of the enemy is to silence a man because things happen when we speak which is why we are silent, because we're under the spell of Satan. We're quiet everywhere. We're quiet at home. We're quiet at church. You know your son needs to be talked to, but you don't want to fight with his mama because she's telling you how to talk to him. Let me tell you some women, if you got a good man in your house, don't you stand in between him and his son. Don't put your hands on my child. The Bible says beat them and they will not die. Read your scripture. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your scripture. I know, I know what you're thinking, but read your Bible. Those whom he loves, he also chastises. What is wrong with our young boys today is that they have no disciplinarian. Can I still talk to you? Adam is in the garden. He feels last. Now all of a sudden, he sees Eve. He see what the animals do. He tried. Nine months later, they got sons. He learned how to procreate from an animal. What do lions do after they mate with lionesses? They leave. He learned from the beast. The one thing a man can do without help is leave. That's his nature. That's why I told y'all to praise God for a man that stayed, because any man that stayed is acting in opposition to his nature. He leaves. He has two sons, Cain and Abel, and they are born. And then they give an offering to God. And the Bible says that God saw that Abel's offering was more advantageous than Cain's. So Cain saw that his offering was considered last. Now, why does he struggle? with being considered last? Well, because the first thing that Adam gave Cain was not a name, it was insecurity. Adam felt last, now Cain feels last, and now Cain kills Abel because he feels last. And by the way, go read your Bible. By the time you get to the fourth chapter, Cain has left the garden. 
he leaves. And the Bible says he lives as a vagabond for the rest of his life. Because men, when we are in a tight spot and we don't have words to say or we don't feel that we would be believed or we don't feel validated, let me tell you what we will do. We will leave. We will walk right out of the room. And you will think we walked out on you. We've walked out on something that was passed to us because what is the benefit of staying? Am I staying so that I can be manipulated? Am I staying because it's right to do? Am I staying for the kids? And, and I know we talk about men who stay for things other than the relationship but women, y'all stay for other stuff too. Some women, they want to leave, but when they start calculating the bills, they figure they can't live on their own yet, so they stay until they can. So I can't afford this house by myself, so I'm going I'm to stay for a little while, but by the time tax return come, I'll be able to get it, so I'll file in February. because. The devil is after the male voice. And let me tell you why your sons are joining gangs. Not so they can get an AK-47, but because they want a man to tell them what to do. They're getting in the game so that somebody with clout and authority can give them instructions, even if it's the wrong instruction. Are you listening to me? So... Adam gives Cain insecurity, and now Cain is insecure. Listen to me, women, which means that if you don't start lifting your men, you are actually punishing your boys. Whatever man doesn't get from you, he can't give to his sons. And so if you don't have healthy men, you can't have healthy sons. If you don't have strong fathers, you can't have strong boys and daughters for that matter. That's why you got to understand the nature of men. The Bible says in Genesis that man was created in the image of God. And one of the things that God needs to be is what? Praised. And every time God is praised, he does more. Why do, you think, why do you think Solomon said it is better for a man to be on a rooftop or in the desert than in the house with a complaining woman? If you would turn that complaining into praise, let me tell you something. A man who is praised will run through fire and a brick wall to bring the bacon home. A man who is praised. And let me tell you something. Listen to me, women. We need to be loved before we get rich. We need to be loved before we get it right. We need to be loved when we're getting on y'all nerve. We need to be loved because... Most of us are learning how to be husbands and fathers on you. Nobody wants to praise the man. All we want to do is correct him. But you got to praise that man. And when you praise that man, he'll perform miracles. When you praise that man, he'll protect you the more. When you praise that man, he will remember to do the things that you need done without you having to ask for them. One of the things that most women say about men is, why should I respect him if he don't respect me? But how many women have been loved by men they didn't love? You got to respect that man even when he is not in the best position to be respected. He can be acting a fool and be plumb ignorant, but he yours. Talk to me, somebody. I said, talk to me, somebody. Aren't we taught as a society to love women the way they are? Well, why don't y'all love us the way we are? Messed up, toe up, psychologically disturbed, insecure, 
reject it. We are all of those things too. Somebody help Adam. I want you to look at a man right now and say, I, I, I got your back, bro. Just look at him and say, I got your back, bro. I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, let, me tell you, let me tell you why this is so hard. Let me tell you why this is so hard, because only 10% of the room wants to hear what I'm saying. That's why this is so hard, because only 10% of the room wants to hear what I'm saying. But I promise to God, if I was saying, women, you don't need a man, you can get a man, y'all are being here going crazy. Y'all would be going crazy if it was for you. I'm just trying to get you to understand you're damaging your child when you don't give a damn about him. That's your child's father. Do you not want him to be healthy enough to pour into your child and love your child? And let me tell you something, most men are confused and broken, and let me tell you why, because they were born to men who were confused and broken, and let me tell you why, because they were born to men who were confused and broken, and since Adam's time, men have been silent. Adam should have stood up and said, Eve, you heard what God said. God said, we can't eat that tree. You know what he did? He acquiesced to make her happy. And he bit the fruit, and now we are all in trouble because a man didn't speak up. Brother, let me tell you something. The last thing I want you to be is silent. You can be broke, but don't be silent. You can be broken, but don't be silent. You can be confused, but don't be silent. You can be a whoremonger, but don't be silent. Open your mouth and speak life. I need to hear every man in this place today. Open up your mouth and begin to praise God like your life depended on it. How do I know this is true? Because even Jesus, when he was going through his crucifixion, the Bible says he never said. Because when men struggle, we get quiet. The most dangerous man in the world is the one who gets enough courage to not care if you talk to him either. When a man gets to the point where your silence doesn't make him do something different, you're losing. Because every man who still cares will come to you and say, okay, baby, what, what we got to do? What's wrong with you? The moment you can go three days without talking and he can go four? I'm telling you. It ain't going to be good. And you might not care, but I'm just saying. It's a wrap. Don't lose your voice. Talk to your sons, even if you feel uncomfortable. And don't let a divorce make you not be a father to a child you brought into the world. Fight whoever you got to fight to see your child. Stop buying Louis Vuitton and go get you a lawyer. Don't you just let your son or your daughter be out here without you. That's something in you they can't get from nobody else. And I don't care how good the man is that she got, he ain't you. If anything, get alongside that brother and help him raise your child. But don't be absent because you can't have the mama. You're the worst kind of man that won't raise your child because you can't sleep with their mama. She shouldn't have to sleep with you for you to pay child support. She shouldn't have to flirt with you for you to be a man. Be a man every day of your life. Somebody shout, I'm a man. 
man got responsibilities. It's hard to be a man. It's tough to be a man. It's uncomfortable to be a man. But nonetheless, be one anyway. Be one anyway. Be one broke. You ain't got to buy your child Jordans to be a father. All you got to do is show up and spend time with him. Be a man. Sit down and play the video game with them, even if you don't understand what's going on. Sit down with them and dribble the basketball. Have the conversation of the birds and the bees with them. And let me tell you something, just because you made mistakes don't mean you ought to not try. There, man, shout, be a man. Don't you ever be more father to somebody else's child than you are your own. Be a man. Man, you're going to have to fight. Because there's going to be stuff trying to get you along the whole way, but you're going to have to fight. And you're going to have to be strategic, and you're going to have to be smart, and you can't be emotional. You're going to have to think. Because a real man always thinks about the long-term consequences of immediate decisions. Speak up. Stop coming to church and letting the women praise and you just sitting there looking like, like I ain't talking to you too. <laughs> women around here praising and dancing, the fellas just sitting there cool. Let me tell you something, you ain't gonna get no miracle with your hand in your pocket. You ain't gonna get no miracle with your tongue at the roof of your mouth. You gonna have to sabak God too. You gonna have to fall prostrate in the sanctuary. You gonna have to speak in your heavenly language. You gonna have to lift your hands. I wanna see men walking around this room laying your hands on your, hu your, 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 your wives and your, your sons and your daughters. I wanna see husbands doing it too. Women should always be at the altar praying. There ought to be some men carrying your whole family up here, coming to the Lord, beseeching the throne of grace. Having a beard don't make you a man. Having pecs in your chest don't make you a man. Having biceps don't make you a man. What makes you a man is you're responsible for your garden and naming your animals. That's what makes you a man. And you might not be able to buy the garden I can buy, or you might not be able to buy the garden that Pastor Torrance can buy, but get your garden and you tend that garden. Don't, don't wish for somebody else's garden. Work the garden you got. I said work the garden you got. If you got a two-bedroom apartment, work your garden. If you got a 5,000-square-foot house, work your garden. If you got vacation homes, work your garden. Be a man. Help me, Holy Spirit. And let me tell you why you're having trouble. Because I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. It says the first Adam was a created creature. The second Adam was a life-giving spirit. Uh-oh, we got a problem. The reason why Satan hates the first Adam is because he picked a fight with the second Adam. The second Adam is Jesus, according to Paul. Not only, here it is, not only was Jesus the second Adam, if you look at it in the Hebrew, the Bible says that Jesus was the last Adam. So Jesus says, men, you got a complex as a result of the fall. You ain't the last Adam. I was the last Adam. So you never have to be last again. The reason why most men don't know their place is because they haven't found it in God. You keep finding your place in how much money you make and how much your job pay you. But can I get some spiritual men who don't count your worth by what your bank account looks like, but count your worth because when you pray, something happens. Can I get a spiritual man in this house? to make the roof shake on this place and use your voice. I need every brother to find another brother and tell him you ain't last. 
the first shall be last and the last shall be first. I speak to every man in here. It is time for you to find your rightful position. It is time for you to get in the front of the line. It's time for you to call the prayer meeting with your wife, not the other way around. It's time for you to anoint your children with oil, not the other way around. Every man stand up and shout, I'm a man. I said, every man stand up and shout, I'm a man. I'm a man whether I'm unemployed. I'm a man whether I have a savings account. I'm a man whether I have a woman. I'm a man because God created me to be one. Stop calculating your worth on stuff. You don't need seven rings on, 12 bracelets, and 15 chains to be a man. You don't even know how they talking about your crazy butt when you come over here with all that jewelry on and women like, it ain't real anyway. You want to impress a woman, come over and bring her your journal, your prayer life, and your devotional. And tell her, baby, I got your back. I might not be where I want to be, but I promise you I can keep the devil off of you. Where are the real spiritual men in this house today? Give another brother a high five and tell him, this is your season to be the man that God called you to be. Lift up your head, O ye gates, be ye lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I need every man to shout. Shout this man and say, it's my time. Shout, it's my season. Shout, I got the victory. Now, men, if you believe it, I want to hear some noise in this place. Men, remember Romans 8 and 1 the rest of your life. Because men are not often forgiven for their sins. But Romans 8 and 1 says, Therefore is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. Even if they don't forgive you, God has. God has forgiven you. For every mistake, you made. God ain't just a God for women. He don't just forgive them. He don't just give them another chance. He don't just forgive them for divorce. He forgives you too. And let me tell you something. If all mothers were staying with their children, then we would not have receptacles at fire stations. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. They now have a new box at the fire station where you can go and drop the baby off and it is inside of the fire station and it locks from the outside after you drop the baby off. So let me ask you, are men doing that? But we got a myth that all women stay and all men leave. It's a lie from the pit of hell. There's some single fathers in here right now raising children ain't got help from nobody. There are some single fathers in here right now speaking life into their child and their mama in Vegas living up their life. I want you to start recognizing that men are not asleep at the wheel. It ain't as many of us as it is y'all, but we got this. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm breaking curses in here. I'm breaking chains in here right now. Because if I can get these fathers to see who they are, they're going to call their sons when they get home and say, baby, baby boy, I'm sorry that I wasn't there for you. But as of this day, you got your daddy and I got your back. Because let me tell you, a man that knows that his father has his back, a daughter who knows that her father has her back. I told my wife, I told my wife one day in the conversation, I said, baby, I got a revelation. I said, baby, I got a revelation. I wish I would have known this a long time ago. I said, but here's the problem that I've always had, and the Lord helped cure when I met you. It is not my job to turn you into who I wish you were. It is my job to love you just like you are. And she's always done that for me. 
but that's what men need. Can you love me with my bad temper because I love you with your over-emotionalism? Can you love me when I don't cry? Because I love you and you cry for everything. And after you cry, you still don't change. Can you love me when I lose your job? Because I definitely dated you when you wasn't making a lot. And do I have time to get better? Because I definitely am giving you time to get better. Literally, I think I said this the last time I was here at the North Campus, that we gotta get out of human worship. Do y'all remember that conversation? Yeah. And my brother Cleo sent me a message the same day after the sermon where a woman posted online, I need a man cone. <laughs> Just trying to figure out why y'all get to be worshiped and we don't. Either we both gonna be worshiped or we're not. But this double standard that has men at the back of the line as if we're not contributing, those days got to be over. You think that sleeping with him will satisfy him. It will for 15 minutes. And I'm being generous. You, you live in your house, you, you, you adjust. I want you to look at these men standing up all over this room. They ain't sat down in 25 minutes. You know why they standing up? So I want you to look at all these men because people will say, man, it ain't that many men in the church. All the men stand up real quick. All the men stand up. Oh, it's, it's some men in the church. Look at them in the balcony. Look at all those men in the balcony. It's some men in the church. Let me tell you something. You know why they're standing up? Because they go their whole life and nobody speaks up for them. And the reason why these men in this church and they're going to be back next time, because they finally found a place where somebody ain't scared to speak the truth for them. And you know why they're standing up? Because all of them thinking, Rev, this is what I've been trying to say. But if I said I get punished, if I said it's going to be a problem, ladies, stop always trying to get us to hear you and hear us too. Because if Satan gets behind this Adam's apple and he gets the voice, you're going to have an issue because the Bible says in 1 Peter 3 and 7, let the man pray for the wife, for she is the weaker vessel, that his prayers might not be hindered. Did you not know that when you find the right man, you just haven't found a lover, you found a prayer warrior? I will grab my wife's hands in a minute and get to praying. <laughs> Sometimes I get to praying and she'll, she'll be looking at me like, what you want? I'm like, I, I don't want nothing. We just going to pray. <laughs> we riding in the car today. I know this is a second Father's Day without a father. I just looked at him and said, you going to be all right? Watch what I told her next. 
let me know if you're not. Because she got permission not to be okay today. She got permission. But she can get that from me because she gives that to me. I'm just trying to tell you that a man you won't praise will not perform. Even Jesus got to be praised. And we were created in his image. I tell you what, every man in this place grab another man by the hand. One can chase a thousand. Two of us can put 10,000 to flight. And I'm actually doing me one more favor before I pray. I can almost guarantee you that that brother ain't got a hug from another brother since he can remember. I want you to wrap your arms around that dude and I want you to hug him like y'all used to share twin beds as brothers. Wrap your arms around and hug that brother. Hug him. Oh, it's amazing. Hold on, hold on before we move on. Hold on. Hold on before we move on. I ain't say pat him, because this, come here, Raymond, this is this, this how brothers hug. <laughs> I, I said hug that brother. Put your arms around that brother and squeeze and let him know he ain't by himself. Hug that brother. Hug him. Hug him. Hug him. Now, how many of y'all brothers feel better? So there may be some women in this place today, you're a single woman, you live by yourself, you raising children on your own, you don't have no help, you wish you could find where their daddy was. Let me tell you what we about to do. I got enough brothers in here that's gonna pray the spirit of courage and tenacity in your house. And I'm gonna pray that the spirit of man falls on your house. There's enough of us in here to do it. Look at me, ladies, please. Raise your hand if you have a teenage son in your house. Look at me, look at me, look at pastor. Do me a favor. Do not make your son think he's your husband, nor the man of your house. Because when God does send both, your son is going to pretend as if the person God gave you got to pass an exam. And there's going to be contention. You let God lead your house until he sends the man that he wants in your house. Can I get an amen in this place today? You put that boy in his place so he will be in his place when God puts somebody in your space. Don't let him sleep in your bed. I don't care if you're home or absent. Let him sleep in his own room. He need to knock on your door before he come in. Just walking in the door. Put some parameters in place. Sometimes God won't send you a man because your environment ain't for men. Start balancing your money. You want a husband? Either learn how to order real good or start cooking right now. Either one of them will do. If you order real good, he won't know you don't cook. I want you to order real good. Take it out the box, put it on the plate, make it look like you made it, he won't know. All we is is hungry, that's it. Am I right, brothers? All we, all we is is hungry. 
Most of us don't care if you make some different every day. As long as we full, just feed us until we want no more. Brothers, I'm your father talking to you right now. I have spoken for you, but now I'm going to challenge you. Do not let this seed fall by the wayside. Don't you leave here arrogant. Don't you leave here haughty and puffed up with pride. You leave here humble under the mighty hand of God. You leave here broken and mistake written because you ain't perfect, but nobody is. But do not weaponize this message to be manipulative and get your way. When you get home, you be a man. Honor that woman as a weaker vessel that your prayers may not be hindered. Provoke not your children to raft. Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Don't be silent, men. Stop just trying to be rich. Find your voice. Stop just trying to put on muscle. Find your voice. Stop worried about your fashion for a little bit and find your voice. Be authentic. Be courageous. And I promise you, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Let your family see the emotional side of you. You don't have to be hard all the time. You don't have to know everything. If you don't know where you're going, ask for directions. Stop getting lost for no reason. Do you hear me? I'm so honored to be your father. I'm so honored to be your pastor. I love you too. And it ain't easy to get men to come to church. But brothers, I'm over trying to get you to come to church. I'm after getting to church in you. I want you to take your position. I want to see some of you as prayer warriors. I want to see some of you as ministry leaders. I want to see you in your position. I want to see you here early and not coming late. I want to see a volunteer army of men rise up that everything we do in this church, we don't have to ask a woman to lift nothing. I said we don't have to ask, I don't want to see another woman carrying a chair and opening a door. I want you doing it. If you got my back, say I got you. Let me tell you something, the devil tried to fight one of us, he fighting all of us. We see a child in this church going by the wayside, we all praying for him. Can you hear my mouth and my heart and my mind? Spirit of the living God, touch these men. These are not your typical men. These are men on the upswing, on the rise for the upward call. I call prostate cancer out of their bodies. I call tumors out of their brains. Hallelujah. Cholesterol levels going down, hypertension going down, back pain going away, rejection and insecurity dissolving. I feel them rising. As tears fall down their eyes, and it's okay to do so. I speak courage and life into you. And no weapon 
even if it is a family curse, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every lying tongue of the enemy that rises up against you shall be condemned. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. One last time, ladies, can you praise God for these men? Come on, ladies, praise them. Praise them. What if I told you your man is in this praise? What if, what if God sent him? You've been waiting, but have you been worshiping? Come on, open up your mouth. Glory to God. Every one of you, every one of you, find your voice. And you speak whatever God tells you to say. You'd be surprised what would happen if you don't settle for just being quiet. This is what every man said, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be quiet. That's what the enemy wants you. I want you to get scripture in your mouth, clarity in your heart, and speak up. You hear me? Are we going to worship and we're going to take off and we're going to go home? Oh, Sarge, you want to stay, they want to go. They got to they gotta go to um, a restaurant. Yeah, how many of y'all got reservations? Any reservations? All right, next year, all the women cooking for Father's Day. Amen? amen. Didn't get no amens. I got a few. I said, next, next year, all the women cooking for Father's Day. You know, and if you can't cook, get your girl to make her dish and your other girl to make her dish and just have them drop it off and be like, baby, I was on TikTok thinking about you. I will always you. Come on, Kafia. Recognize in the spirit that after all of this pageantry, Father's Day is a hard day for some people. Some of y'all had a father and you lost him. 
to death or disease or to absenteeism. And I don't want to be insensitive to speak to all of you as if we're all in the same place. For some of you today, it's a, a day of tremendous pain. And I pray that God would give you the peace that will surpasseth all understanding. Like many of you, I can see my father in the casket, still in his clothes, with a familiar face that appeared as if he was just asleep. And I am reminded that that's all he was. He was just asleep. Because one day, the sky's gonna crack like glass. And we're gonna be caught up in the twinkling of an eye. And once more and again, I'll be able to behold his face. But before I get to him, I'm gonna pass up my grandfather. I'm gonna pass up my biological father. I just want to see Jesus' face. I want to see if I can put my hand in the nail print. I want to see if that hole is still in his side. Oh, and I want to tell him how grateful I am that when he died, he didn't leave me out. I'll get to my daddy, I'll get to my grandfather, I'll get to my other brother who's passed away, but I want to see his face. Thank you, Jesus, for being my elder brother. Hallelujah. I pray that the peace of God will be over those of you who've lost a father and that it never gets easier. You just, you just learn to live with it. You'll have moments where you wish you could turn back the hand of time. But anybody know God is too wise to make a mistake and he is too loving to be unkind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in this place today, and we're still gonna give, but I wanna see if there's anybody in this place who feels like this is an apropos moment for you to give your life to Christ. Because this Father, he will never leave you nor will he forsake you. He cannot die. He cannot lie. He's from everlasting to everlasting. If you're in this place today and you've never accepted him as your father, your Lord and Savior, and you believe that this is a place where God is going to continue to grow your faith and to, reach you, to, to raise you to higher heights and deeper depths, Wherever you are in this room, if you're in the balcony, you're in the back, you're in the front, I want you to come and consider being a part of this family. Lighthouse Nation, we're talking to you too. They're going to put a link up on the screen so that you can join us virtually and be a part of our global experience. If you're in this place today and God has sent you here to connect with this church, I want you to come and we're going to praise God for you as you come, wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, just come. You can come as you are, but don't leave like you came. They're going out of the door. Come on and praise God for them. God bless you. God bless you, brother. God bless you, my brothers. Thank you for men coming. God bless you, sister. Thank you. Hallelujah. All of my worship. God bless you, brothers. Thank you. Right this way. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will, and I will not be silent. I will, I will always worship you as long as I I will, I will.
Come on, church, let's sing it one more time. We're going home, and I will not be silent. And I will not be silent. Oh, I will. I will always As long as Here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my, All of my please receive. Listen, let's get ready to give. How many of y'all are glad that you have something to give? Come on and praise God for that. God bless you. They're still coming. God bless you, my brother and my sister. As we get ready to give, I want you to give intentionally. Everybody say intentionally. Come on, listen to me. Say intentionally. If you give with intent, you will know what to expect. How many of you need something from God? Let me see your hands. If you need something from God. When you give today, I want you to have on your mind what you need from him. And I need you to give to him as if he can supply the thing you're thinking about. So don't be overzealous in what you need and underperform in what you give. Freely you give, freely you receive. And let me tell you about God. When you give to him, he'll give it back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. And then he'll, he'll employ people to give to you. I speak checks in the mail. Unexpected raises on the job. Refunds you didn't see coming. Even the Lord showed me you overpaid on something. They're going to have to pay you back. And while I'm praying, I need somebody to give into your health because God showed me while I was up there, he showed me um, that there was somebody in here, a male, struggling, struggling with kidney failure. Kidney failure. And we're going to sow into health. Anybody know anybody in the room that's struggling with kidney failure? I want you to, I want you to sow. Is it you? Come here. Come here. Come here. Nick, come with your dad. Hallelujah. We're all about to go before the Lord on your behalf. Hallelujah. Is anybody else? Literally, I was standing there, the Lord showed me to make an altar call for kidney failure. I know it's Father's Day. Maybe there's a woman here today. We're not, we're past that. We're in a new... Is there, is there anybody else other than this gentleman that we're praying for? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're all about to sow our gifts for your healing. I'm assigning my tithe today to your healing. Oh, God, help me in this place. Now, some of y'all might need something for yourself. See, my God supplies all of my needs. I can afford to sow a seed on somebody else's behalf. How many of y'all will sow your seed today for their healing? Just hold it up. I want you to turn around and look at how many people are getting ready to sow their seed on your behalf. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. I anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and I speak healing to your entire body, and I decree and declare 
that every cell in your body will align up with the scripture that says, by his stripes, you are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon. formed against you shall prosper. Hold your gift up in the air. Lord God, we are online and in this place getting ready to sow seeds on behalf of our brothers and sisters who need you. You created every one of their bodies. You know them inside and out. And if you did it before, you can do it again. We declare healing in their physical body by the mercy seat of God, by the blood of Jesus. Online, we project healing in every city, every state, every home, every office, every automobile. God, touch your people like only you can. I'm asking for hundreds of testimonies. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody shout amen. amen. Pass your gift to my right, your left. I'm going to pray this prayer of benediction over you. As you go home, I pray that you will find everything in order. I pray that God will mend you everywhere you hurt. I pray that God will give you clarity because he is not the author of confusion. No car accidents on the way home. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm just going to say it. I, I pray over the daycare your baby's at. I'm praying over your neighborhoods and the companies that you're about to start. They're going to start off in an amazing way. I pray every father in this place would not lose his voice or would speak what God told him to say. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say amen. Hug somebody on your way out, tell them I love you, and there is nothing you